Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Troy Johnson, also known as Radio. Um, I'm a songwriter, producer, um, just trying to do something special here in music and make my own mark, I guess, and uh, just having fun with it and uh, utilizing SSL to to help bring my crazy imagination to life. <laughs> I was um, born in a musical family. Um, my father was in a group called the Brothers Johnson, um, George Johnson, a guitar player, and Basically, I was born in the studio. My first word was tape. Um, I was always like the, the little kid nerd that had no friends that just loved music equipment. <laughs> you know, this is like the most humble setup I've ever had in my career. You know, this, little, this little desk, this little box, you know, and it's my favorite. Like, it's like the inspiration is always there. I'm always ready to go. I'm always, everything is like within arm's reach, you know, and it's just everything that I need on a professional level, you know, not just, not subpar. It's just the, you know, real deal stuff going on. Here. Yeah, a lot of times, like on my kick tracks, this is what they'll look like. It's just like straight up, like really, really extreme. And, um, and, and I find myself, I find that I have to make up for, um, there's just a lot of, like thinness going around in the digital kind of, you know, so I, like I'm going extreme and then if it's too much, then I'll just go, you know, bring it back off and, you know, with a little plug in or something, and, you know, but I don't really have a, ever have trouble with over compressing, especially having this, uh, this stereo bus compressor strapped on my mix. I always keep it on. Like I, I know some people, they'll wait till the end to put it on. Um, I, I keep the stereo bus mixer in throughout the whole process and that kind of keeps everything in check a little bit. But I love this the stereo bus compressor because um, there's still a lot of space in it like when you, you know, even just barely touching it, you know, it does what it's supposed to do but it's just like still very wide open and um, you hear all the transient. And a lot of times even that enhances the, the transients and the different individual sounds, you know, depending on the settings that you have it on. So um, I, that I guess that that keeps me from wanting to like go crazy, <laughs> but sometimes I do. I will go crazy, and it'll sound it'll create a new sound that I was looking for, or that I maybe I wasn't looking for that I love that I will be looking for later. <laughs> so basically, what I do is I um, with the J Lo song, for instance, I uh, got the I printed the stems out on the board on the on the G, and um, it wasn't that many tracks. I think it might have been like. 48 tracks or something like that um, and I brought all of the, the stems home but of course I wanted to go back to some of the original and change the EQs and you know do this and whatever and so basically I would I would bring up what I what I like so I, I have a 16 channel summing um, console here and so what I did is I kept all the elements that I liked um, you know that I, that I was going to use and just you know sum those you know separately and then when I wanted to dive in and, and do a little more surgery and do what I need to do. Um, you know, I used uh, the, you know, EQs here and, um, and the, the, I use a little bit, I use some plugins too. I definitely use, you know, I'm not trying to kill <laughs> plugins off because they're, they are amazing. They do, they do amazing things. I love them to death. You know, I, I, I use the, the, the analog EQs here to, to really, um, do my surgery on the sounds that I need to replace and everything and um, pull it up here and, it, and it's just basically a 16 channel summing situation but what I do is I, I try to um, like I'll, I'll try to keep my, my kicks and snares on separate channels um, and, and then I'll do like a percussion stem like hats and toms and all whatever and then I'll do like a bass and keys and so on and so forth so um, depending on what what needs fixing um, you know, I'll, normally that'll, that'll be its own stem, its own separate stem if I need to fix it. And like a piano part, I'll bring it up and then do my thing. And then it's not that expensive to get a, a great setup to where you can really, you know, compete, you know, with, with everyone else out there. You can really, really compete. And it's really like people can hear it and like, oh, well, that doesn't sound that much different from, you know, this record that was mixed on such and such, you know, that, that actually, can you know I can hear similarities in the in the sound of it. I I could just 
get up and go. I could just like roll this, <laughs> so I could like go, I find, a lot of times I find artists wanting to work wherever they, you know, when I work with uh, Jorgen, for instance, he'll come, he'll stay in Santa Monica just because he likes the water. So why don't you come to my place? So I was like, okay, well, you know, I could just roll my little rack in my computer and we have a full on, you know, real studio, talk back, everything, whatever we need. And even though it's not a conventional studio environment or room, you know, you're still getting the, what you need out of it, you know, absolutely. We actually wrote the song for um, Leona Lewis originally for a writing camp. I'm signed to Sony ATV, and so I ended up writing the song with um, Jorgen Lofsen and Evan Bogart. And Evan Bogart also wrote um, other hits with like Beyonce and all these. You know, they're all like they're like super mega writers. <laughs> and so like little old me, you know, I'm just in there, and, and we, um, you know, we went there and, and like I said, had fun, spontaneous environment. But we did have a, a pitch in mind. Like I said, it was for Leona. So we were kind of thinking about subconsciously, not trying to overthink it, but just put the little thought in the back of our head, like, okay, um, you know, Bleeding Love Part 2 maybe, I don't know, <laughs> you know. So we just kind of like, you know, did it, and then it didn't, they didn't take the song for whatever reason, which, you know, which is fine. And then um, my manager ended up having a meeting with, with, uh, uh, with Jayla's people when she was at Epic, played the song, they liked it, and um, I was like, okay, well, that's, I never expected J-Lo to want to record it. All right, let's, let's give it a try. And it was funny, when I met her, she's like, uh, well, you know, I played the song for Mark Anthony when, uh, you know, Mark, when I um, first got it, and he was like, babe, you can't do that song. You can't do it. It's out of your vocal range. <laughs> and she was like, you know what? Now I'm really going to do it. <laughs> and she, you know, I, I wasn't able to, to be there when she recorded it because I, she has um. Uh, she was working with Coot Carell. He uh, vocal produced the song for me. I heard it. I was like, oh my gosh, she killed it. <laughs> like, this, is, this is great. And when I play the song for people, that's usually their response. They're like, so is this J-Lo version or is it, you know, who's singing? And they're like, no, this is the J-Lo record. Like, she killed it. Like, you don't even, you know, there's no, like, I got the, you know, there's no kind of technology, you know, a little bit, but not. It's like she really is just like, the thing I love about it is the emotion. She's singing from her heart. She's really giving you everything she can in this record and she sells the record better than anyone else I, I think in my opinion that could have done the record so. they wanted some you know updated production and you know just little small things whatever so um she was at record plant and so i, I think i thought i was going there just for a meeting i had all my stuff just in case so i'm always ready but i'm like <laughs> you know i'm just going there for a meeting to check it out and then um i meet her she tells me a little story about her and mark whatever and then um they tell me what you know what they wanted done, and I was like, okay, well I can you know um, change the drums around a little bit and you know add some more synth stuff for you know what was I guess more appropriate for the time and what's going on. Um, so I was like, you know, I you know I had all kind of stuff going on, and so um, it's a matter of just lowering some stuff and featuring other things, and so um, in the process of that, you know, Benny Benny was like, hey, just mix it. <laughs> I was like, uh, like really, and mix it? You know, I mean. All right, well, yeah, we're here, you know. So I uh, was on a G console, mixed the, the record on a G, um, that after I finished the, the production, the post-production. And, I mean, I think it came out pretty well. And then uh, they heard it, and like, oh, it's great. Okay, we just want to make a couple changes. Uh, problem was, is, uh, you know, it was the next day, and, you know, the studio was booked out and everything. I was like, okay, well, um, great. It's a good thing I have my good old S X desk and X rack over here because I can pull up these channels and, you know, I could literally do an actual recall um, or or change things or, or still get the same exact analog clarity and quality that I would get at Record Plant at my house. You know, it's like amazing. I was like, okay, this is the perfect opportunity to utilize this this whole setup that I have. And it came out great. They, they were like, alright, well, and, and honestly I didn't, I still didn't know if it was, I was like, okay, maybe this is still the demo mix. I don't know. We'll see. And then they're like, oh, well, so we're sending it off to mastering. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I guess I'll finish the final mix at my house. <laughs> That's great. But the thing I love about this story is the fact that I, I actually had, you know, the real deal SSL, you know, stuff. You know, bus compressor. Like, you know, I was able to bring up the stems and still sum it, you know, and, and still get the same quality that I'd get on the, you know, on the G. You know, it was, it was just, it was exact. You know, it was great. So it's a the stereo you know, the the field, everything was just like no problems. It's easy. <laughs>